Shalom, Shalom, my brother Kadash. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashir, Bihashir, Bahashir, Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders. Peace, blessings, honors to our brothers and the truth. This is going to be named Will There Be Slaves in the Kingdom? You know, the Kingdom of God, the Kingdom of Heaven. Will There Be Slaves? You know, we're just going to pull a couple precepts just to, um, you know, just to shut down any doubt. You know, the, after we pull these precepts, right, it should prove to you without a shadow of doubt that. Yes, there is going to be slaves in the kingdom because this video I'm about to play for you kind of shows that, you know, the judgment we went through, slavery and captivity was a curse that was put on our people. You know, we've seen that. We've seen us go through it, right? So the judgment on the flip side is that the nations that took us into slavery, they're going to have those same curses on, on, on them that we had on us, and they're going to go into slavery. You know, it speaks about it in Deuteronomy chapter 30 that the curses that we went through, all of them, the other nations or enemies are going to have to go through those same curses. You know, that's the great thing about the Lord. That's the judgment. But this video I'm going to play is talking about the slave Bible. Right now, a lot of our people today, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, the 12 tribes of Israel, they choose not to follow the Bible because of a big misunderstanding. And the misunderstanding is they believe that they don't want to believe in the Bible because of the slave Bibles that was used against the slaves, us, right, in order to control us, right? So now this video I'm going to play was actually on news, right, and it's going to um, go through some key things and we're going to speak on them. So let's let it play. Washington's Museum of the Bible, a single volume that is like no other. The so-called slave Bible, remarkable not for what's in it, but for what's not. So about 90% of the Old Testament's been removed and about 50% of the New Testament's been removed. So hold it right there. He said 90% of the Old Testament was removed from the slave Bibles and 50% of the New Testament was removed. So that goes to show you that that's not the same Bible. If you remove 90% of something, it's not the same thing. You know, so it's not the same Bible. It's not the King James Version, which he's about to speak of it. They they take parts out of it, right? Now, the spiritual thing, that, the key thing, the key spiritual thing I want you to see is the same way they did that, it's the same thing with the Christian church today. They take parts out the Bible to make up a whole religion or a whole doctrine, a whole philosophy, right? But they don't take the Bible for a whole for what it is the christian the christian church does that and the catholic church does that christian church is just you know like a spinoff of the catholic church but these different religions and these philosophies they take parts of the bible to kind of um build a philosophy and a story to teach but it's not the truth of the bible you see and a lot of people come and they ask and they say look what religion are you a part of and what's the what's the answer you know you brothers know you brothers know perfectly what the answer is it's not a religion you know this is psalm chapter 40 right verse um seven it says then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yet yeah, the law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation, and I have not refrained my lips, O oh Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed the loving kindness of thy truth from the great congregation. So in order to give the truth, you have to read the whole whole bible it's not just the new testament and it's not just the old testament you have to come with the full truth of the bible not just take parts because if you do just take parts and just teach those certain parts you're going to get out of context there's going to be misunderstanding and you're no better than the slave owners using a slave bible that didn't even have 90 percent of the old testament or 50 percent of the new testament uh, to put it another way, a normal King James Version has 1,189 chapters in it. Uh, the Slave Bible has only 232. Missing are chapters and verses that might have... And you got to think about it. They're condemned for doing that. What they did, they're condemned for doing that, man. So no, they can't be saved. Why? Because they have a judgment that's coming for them for even doing something like that. This is Revelation 22. Very popular precept. Verse 15. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him 
the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man should take away from the word words of this book of this prophecy, God should take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So any man, you know, but amongst Israel, but even these Edomites are going to be judged and these other nations are going to be judged for taking and take, they took 90 percent of them. You see what I'm saying? So they have a judgment coming from let's let it play encouraged uprisings book of Exodus redacted no story of Moses demanding Pharaoh let my people go gone is Galatians and the verse there is neither bond nor free for ye are all one in Christ Jesus right because they took out the story right on um, they said of Moses and everything like that because especially in the book of Exodus it points to people you know and they wanted to hide that and it points to us being free and our lord the power of our lord being able to free us and they wanted to hide those things especially when we was in hardcore bondage slavery we're still in slavery today we're still in bondage spiritually mentally and physically if you look at the jails right but our lord is coming back to save us and no jeremiah woe unto him that useth his neighbor's service without wages yeah shit and even in Jeremiah 40, 49, it says they going to drink of the same cup. So since we talking about the curse, it says, look, they think they're going to escape that judgment, but they have to drink of the cup too. It tells you that in Jeremiah 49, P plenty of precepts in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 30. I mean, Jeremiah 30 verse seven, Jacob's trouble, you know, and, um, the stranger should not, um, use themselves of us anymore. How did they use themselves? Shit. The worst was hardcore bondage, captivity and slavery. You know, they was really using us left in are verses such as Ephesians 6 5 which is the famous verse slaves be obedient to your master looking at this Bible it's hard to tell that anything's been taken out of it that's correct I mean it looks like a normal book for many enslaved Africans this would have been the first time they were exposed to the Bible a Bible that's not true that's that's not true you know um, we always had the Bible and we had the stories. It's not so much about the Bible, the actual book. It's about the truth that's found in the Bible. We always had the truth, you know, and there's times where, where we lost it. It's times where, where, um, you know, things went dark for us, you know, but a remnant of us always had the truth, you know, and, um, the, the stories of Moses and all that stuff, we always knew that, you know, so, that wasn't the first time of us knowing the truth, you know, of the Bible, you know, because King James himself was an Israelite. Let's let it play. Selectively edited to instill obedience, using religion to underpin the horror of slavery. And a lot of those Moors, those kings, the Moorish kings and stuff were also Israelites. You know, you have to check the history, do the research. So when you when you do check the history and do the research, you will find that we always had the Bible. That wasn't our first time seeing the Bible. They used the Bible against us because they knew who we were. When people encounter this exhibit, what lasting impression do you want them to leave with? Well, we want to pass the message on that may this never happen again. Uh, the Bible itself is a is a whole book. It's not one that you get. To right. And then they use the Bible against us because it's our book. So what's the greatest weapon to destroy a person? Well, well, the thing is, the same thing the Lord is going to do to Esau, where it says in Isaiah 34 that the Lord is going to bay that sword and bay the sword in heaven, and it's going to come down upon the people of doom. But at the same time, the Lord blessed Esau with the sword. So you take your enemy's greatest weapon and make it his um his curse, you know, make it his downfall. Uh, roughly paraphrasing, what was that saying? Um, his weakness. You take his, you take, you take his greatest strength and make it his weakness. So the Lord's going to take Esau' greatest strength, which is a nu hypersonic nuclear missile today, and he's going to make it his weakness because the um the second death is going to come by, by the way of hypersonic nuclear missiles and all different type of missiles and nukes and stuff and bombs and stuff like that. So the Lord is taking his greatest strength and making his weakness. And they did that against us. Our greatest strength, which is the truth that's in the spirit that's found in the Bible, they used it against us. Carve up and use this piece or that piece. The slave Bible designed to repress rebellion, but it didn't work. Enslaved people in the Caribbean constantly fought against slavery until emancipation. I think it's very relevant to understand our history. Not just American history, but our African-American history, our roots and how we got to this point. Shit, fuck that. Go even further. Uh, let's understand our true history. 
or Hebrew Israelite history. And then you have stories of people like Nat Turner when he started reading the Bible. You know, they, they hear slave revolts and stuff like that. You know, and then we start reading the Bible today and look at what's what look what's going on with Esau's kingdom right now. The shit is on shaky legs right now, man. It's very unstable, you know. Now, let's prove that, you know, what goes around comes around and there is going to be slavery in the kingdom of heaven, right? We ain't we ain't saying that slavery is a bad thing. We saying that taking the Israelites, the Lord's chosen people into slavery is a bad thing. This is um Joel chapter three, verse one. It says, for behold, in those days and in that time when I should bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. So we went in slavery, right? So-called Negroes, um, Latino tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So the Lord is going to take us out of that captivity. It says, and I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, right? Um, um, Yahweh's judgment, judgment of Yahweh, right? It says, and will plead with them there for my people. He going to plead them for who? He just told you, Judah and Jerusalem. It said, that's who his people are. And for my heritage, Israel, who they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So the Lord is going to, how is going to plead with them? He going to go to war with them. It speaks about that in Revelation chapter 12. Second address chapter 13, Revelation chapter 19 speaks about the, the armies of the earth, the nations going to war with the Lord. That's how he's going to plead with them. And we're very close to those times right now. It says, and they have cast lots for my people and had given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for my wine that they might, that they might drink. We are in captivity, complete captivity. It says, yeah. Oh, what have ye to do with me? O Tyre and, Z and Zidon and all the coasts of um, Palestine. Will ye render me recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly, speedily, I will return your recompense upon your own head. I wanted to say your own fucking head just to get the spirit flowing, right? But it says, because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things, the Israelites, right? The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold into the Grecians. We know the Grecians were Edomites, the ruling class were the Edomites, right? Not just the ruling class, but the, really the people. Now, amongst that kingdom, you had all different type of nations scattered. Something like how you have America right now. You have all different type of um, nations in America, but the majority in the ruling class, um, in the top class in America, would be so-called Edomites, Caucasians. It says that ye have might remove them far from their borders. Behold, I will raise them out of their place where the ye have sold them, right? So put it together. Who was the if you had a list, right? And who would be number one on that list as far as people being sold and like as as slaves? You would have to say the Negroes. There's been no other slavery like the ones that the Negroes and the Latinos and Native Americans went through as a whole. You know, the transatlantic slave trade is number one on that list by far. There's nothing else that compares to that. Put it together. It makes sense. It says, um, and will return your recompense. No, I'm sorry. Um, behold, I will raise them out of the places where ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. So you will have to say that we got something to do with this, right? We number one on the list, but we ain't got nothing to do with this. Come on. We, we are the Israelites. It says, and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah. So when is the Lord going to sell the Grecians sons and their daughters into the hands of Judah? Well, this is going to happen in the kingdom of God, right? It says, and they should, because this is when Judah's going to get the power back. Judah's not going to get the power back until they get into the kingdom, right? It says, and they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, um, to a people far off, for the Lord has spoken it, right? And the Lord has spoken this, so this will happen. So if this is talking about the kingdom, right, then this points to there being slaves in the kingdom, 100%. But just in case you still kind of, you know, on the edge and you still don't, you know, you're not really feeling it, right? You say, yeah, I, I hear you, but I'm not really feeling it because there's other. Well, then let's get another precept, right? These are prophecy precepts. What I just read in Joel chapter three is a future prophecy that it has not happened yet because the Lord has not brung all nations down to the valley of Jehoshaphat and pled there and went to war with them yet. That has not happened yet. So that's a Bible 
prophecy that still has to be fulfilled. This is Isaiah chapter 14. Of course, very popular couple precepts right here. Verse one, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. So who is the Lord choosing to save Israel? Not all nations. It says, and set them in their own land. Like if I look, if I got three cars, right? I got all three cars parked in front of you. And I say, choose a car. Now, if you take all three, that's not, that's not you choosing a car. You're choosing all of them. You see? So for the Lord to say he's choosing and then name Israel, he's saying, look, out of all the nations on the earth, he's going to choose Israel. Right? It's, it's, it's common sense, right? It says, and the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob and the people should take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. So when is the Israelites going to get this power to possess people for servants and handmaids? This is in the kingdom. It says, and they should take them captives who captives they were, and they should rule over their oppressors. Now, did it say that um, they're going to rule over their oppressors for 10 years, for 15 years, for 20 years, 100 years? No, it don't give you a time period. So it doesn't say that it's going to end. It's just telling you, look, in the kingdom, this is when they're going to get this power. If you put it together, right? And they're going to take captives who captives a war forever. You know, because even once the other nations get out of that hard carbon slavery, just like we did, they're still going to be in the state that we're in today. They're still going to be under us in subjection to us. And they're still going to be forced to follow our laws. Now, let's keep going. Verse 3 says, And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve, that thou should take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How has thy oppressor ceased that golden city ceased? So now it's talking about a golden city ceasing. But the Israelites are here in this golden city in slavery right because it says they're going to take captives who captives they were so that would mean that the israelites would be in captivity under this place that's being called babylon which is the golden city put it all together if the so-called negroes latinos and native americans are the israelites guess what that means that means that that place will have to be america which is called mystery babylon in revelation chapter 17 and 18 it will have to be america that's how you get the truth man it's that simple. So it's telling you, look, there's going to be slavery in the kingdom. This and, and who's going to go on slavery? It will have to be the people that took the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans or the 12 tribes of Israel in slavery, which would be who? The Caucasians. Right? Now let's um pull one more. Let's give you a three-piece. Let's give you a three-piece just to, you know, back it up, you know. Let's pull one more. Um... Let me jump back to the beginning, close to the beginning, in the middle. This is Psalms 149. These are all prophecy precepts. There's no way around these precepts. And like I said, you could get Deuteronomy 30, you know, um, there's, there's plenty more, right? Reve a lot of books in Revelation speaks of it, you know, um, when we said Jeremiah 49, you know, um, Isaiah 60, Isaiah 61, you know, there's plenty of precepts. I'm just naming them off the top of my head. But um, um, this is Psalms 149, and this is a future prophecy. And there's no way around these, what I'm, what I'm speaking. Um, there's no way around these, man. There's no different doctrine that you can make up to try to claim that um, the other nations are not going to be slaves in the kingdom. This is clearly telling you. I mean, Zechariah chapter 14. I mean, there's so many, right? This is verse 1. It says, this is at Psalms 149 verse 1 it says praise ye the Lord sing unto the Lord a new song in his praise in the congregation of his saints which is who the Israelites let Israel rejoice in him that made him let the children of Zion be joyful in their king let them praise his name in the dance let them sing praises unto him with the timber world and the heart so when are we going to be doing all this praise in the Lord man this will happen obviously all from the point of salvation to to the kingdom which is everlasting this is when we're going to be praising the lord so this is kingdom talk right here it says for the lord take a pleasure in his people and will and will beautify the meek with salvation right so like we just said salvation 
let the saints be joyful uh, joyful in glory let them sing a law upon their beds let the high praise of god be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand wait a minute a two-edged sword right for to do what with it it says to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people so the lord is going to give his people israel power to execute vengeance it speaks about this in revelation chapter 2 it says to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with um, feathers of iron because wasn't we bound with chains during slavery and feathers of iron during slavery yes so just like it says in revelation 13 those that lead in captivity should go into captivity those that kill it with the sword should be killed with the sword so esau put us in slavery they're going to go in slavery and they killed us with the sword and what did the lord say we already quoted in isaiah 34 the lord going to bay that sword in, in the heavens and it's going to come down upon Adumia and the people of his curse right verse 9 says to execute upon them the judgment written why because that's their judgment a lot of people say well why would the lord do that why do the lord got these people cursed why is the lord setting these people up for this why is the lord going to do that to the nations because that's judgment righteous judgment don't fucking act like y'all don't know what the judgment is coming from. Y'all know what y'all did, man. And y'all want to deny it and deny it. And like, just like it says in Jeremiah 49, y'all want to act like y'all not going to get punished for it. Everybody, you got to gotta lay in that bed. You know, you got to lay in your bed. So you're going to get punished for it. It says, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. And it's going to be an honor for his saints. Right? So these guys that... It's telling you there's not going to be slavery in the kingdom and this is not going to happen. That's because it's not an honor to them. And that's because they're not one of the saints. They're not one of the elect. You know, so with that, we're going to say salvation to the elect. Shalom.